Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in my this particular video, I am going to discuss one very interesting application of multiple linear regression in solving image processing related use cases. Okay. So first let us see one particular animation which I already discussed in detail in my previous video. That is pendulum tracking using morphological image processing. Okay. So I will just select line number 1 to line number 32 and I will do evaluate selection. One new figure window will open. I will make this bigger and I will hit enter. You will see in the left hand side one pendulum is performing simple harmonic motion and this particular blob part is getting tracked in the right side image. Okay and at different instance of time what is the center x and y coordinate location that is getting plotted in this particular right side image okay now you can easily understand that this particular path or trajectory of this particular blob is nothing but a part of a very big circle okay and for that circle what is the radius that we have to calculate okay so i hope you are getting that that is this pendulum is performing simple harmonic motion what is the length of the rope using which this pendulum is moving or what is the radius of that bigger circle where this particular path is the part of that bigger circle that radius we have to calculate that is the problem statement now okay so this we are going to solve using multiple linear regression so obviously you need to know the fundamentals and MATLAB implementation of multiple linear regression for that you can check my previous video that link also i will be providing in the description box okay now let us go step by step so if you see this particular right side image it is an image okay so all these coordinates are plotted on image right so let us try to do one thing let us try to plot the same coordinates in a figure window where only these coordinates will be plotted okay not in terms of image okay so what we can do here if we see this is the line number 28 this is the part of code which is plotting that central location of the blob at different instance of time okay in that image so i have taken the same code here and in a new figure window i am plotting with axis equal okay so what i will do i will just select this particular part and do evaluate selection i will be getting some figure like this but this is completely kind of mirror image of the trajectory what we observed what is the actual trajectory compared to that this is just the reverse thing and again the explanation is same why this is happening because always remember when you are considering image coordinate system the origin is at left top corner but when you are plotting something the origin should be at left bottom corner so we have to adjust this particular difference right so for that in MATLAB if you check let me just do health axis if i do we will be getting detailed explanation about axis command and here one very helpful function is there axis ij what it does it basically puts matlab into matrix axis that is coordinate system origin is at the upper left corner okay so we are going to use this axis ij as a extra line of code okay so now let us run this particular code with axis ij and do evaluate selection and we can easily see that this is actually our trajectory so what we need to do we need to fit a circle basically that's it on this particular one and that circle radius whatever we will be getting that is basically the length of the rope using which the pendulum is doing simple harmonic motion or the blob is doing simple harmonic motion so now the problem statement boils down to a multiple linear regression equation okay or multiple linear regression problem statement where basically we have to fit all these points to a part of circle okay so let us go to this particular pdf first and let us see how we can frame the equations okay because for multiple linear regression we need such kind of equation where y equal to a naught plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 and so on where x1 x x2 y values known and the coefficients we need to determine okay so what is the general equation of circle x minus xc whole square plus y minus yc whole square equal to r square okay right where xc and yc are the uh, center coordinate and r is basically 
the radius of the circle. Just expand this one. A minus B whole square is equal to A square minus 2AB plus B square. Same apply for this. You will be getting X square minus 2XC into X plus X square plus Y square minus 2YC into Y plus Y square equal to R square. Okay. Now consider minus of 2XC as A and minus of 2YC as B. So the equation will be X square plus AX plus XC square plus Y square plus by plus yc square equal to r square okay where a and b and r these three are unknown basically even xc yc is also unknown right because central location or radius we don't know only we know x coordinate and y coordinate that is x square and y square these two are known a xc r yc b all are unknown okay right now let us take all the unknowns in one side and let us try to frame the equation for multiple linear equation. So, ax plus by plus c x square y c square that is center coordinate x coordinate and y center location x coordinate and y coordinate square minus of r square and I am consummating one term equal to minus of whole x square plus y square. Okay. So, what is happening now if you see that all the unknown type of terms are in the left hand side, known type of terms are in the right hand side. Okay. So it will be ax plus by plus c, where we are considering c equal to x square plus y square minus r square. Okay. So ax plus by plus c equal to minus of x square plus y square. Okay. Now see if you see that x known, y known. Okay. And in this side also. Now this is nothing but kind of equation like. Uh, beta naught x naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus some constant equal to y value. Okay, where y x 1 x 2 known, we need to calculate beta naught beta 1 and that constant value. Like that, this is now a multiple linear equation equation. So, if we just put different values of x and y, like we already have in this particular one, we already have different uh, at different position. What is the x and y value we already have, right? Which is basically part of the bigger circle, right? So basically, all these uh, coordinates will satisfy this equation, right? So just substitute. Suppose first uh, coordinate is x one, y one. Second is x two, y two. Third is y x three, y three, and so on. Then you will be getting a x one plus b y one plus c equal to minus of x1 square plus y1 square. Similarly, for x2, y2 coordinate, if, if you substitute, you will be getting this equation. Similarly, for x3, y3 coordinate, if you substitute, you will be getting this equation. And like that, so on, whatever total number of uh, data points we are having here, that many equations you will be getting. And now here, a is unknown, b is unknown, c is unknown. We can represent this set of linear equation like this matrix form. If you see, that it is justifiable, right? Because x1 multiplied by a plus y1 multiplied by b plus c equal to minus of x1 minus of x1 square plus y1 square. That that is we are getting back the first equation. Like that, if you multiply this particular row with this column, you will be getting back this particular second equation like that. So this particular matrix representation is also correct. Now we just simply going to apply. The concept of multiple linear regression that is solving this kind of equation, right? I have already told you that is suppose this matrix is M, this whole matrix is M and this whole matrix is N. Then to get the coefficients, you have to do P inverse, that is pseudo inverse M multiplied by N. What is the reason why we are taking pseudo inverse? All this I have explained in detail, right? Because for this particular matrix, it is always not necessary that inverse will exist, okay? Let's say we are taking pseudo inverse, right? And we will be getting after uh, doing this particular one, whatever we will be getting, the first value will be A, second value will be B, third value will be C, right? Simple. So now, if you see that uh, once we get the A, B, C value, it will be very easy for us to get the center coordinate X location for center Y location and the radius because A, B, C known. If we can easily calculate, suppose A is known, we can easily get this uh, X coordinate for the center that is XC will be minus of A by 2. That's what I have written here. XC equal to minus of A by 2. Similarly, if we know value of B, that time uh, to get the value of YC, it will be nothing but minus of B by 2. So YC equal to minus of B by 2. 
So now we are having the center coordinate x, y, c. Now we want to get the radius. So x, c, y, c known. C is also known from this uh, multiple linear equation, right? So r will be nothing but what? x square plus y c square minus c and then square root we have to take because here r square is present. So from this equation if c is known, x c is known, y c is known, we can easily say r equal to root over of uh, x c square plus y c square minus c. Okay. So this is what we are going to do to get the radius. Okay. Right. So first step what we are doing here, observe it very carefully. Here first step is we have to build up this particular matrix. Okay. This particular matrix we have to build where x coordinate, y coordinate and last one is all one. And we have to get this particular one as well. So what are these? These are this x1, y1, uh, x2, y2, x3, y3, so on are nothing but these data points. Okay. Right. So what I did here, here I did xi equal to pulse center, yi equal to row center. So always as I tell you, like if you see this particular any image, okay. Maybe let me show you one image. Uh, I am show frame region. Let me just run this particular one and show you what I want to discuss. So if you see this particular image, right? So in matrix dimension, whenever we are moving column wise, see, if you move column wise, you are basically changing the x coordinate. And if you move low wise, that time you are changing the uh, y coordinate, right? So column is linked with x. And row is linked with y, right? That's why here, here what I have done, here I have defined like this way, xi, all the xi, x1, x2, x3, so on, is nothing but call center. Call center is storing what? Call center is storing the column location uh, at each instance of that pendulum, okay, which we have already taken in our uh, previous code. That is this particular one, row center and call center we have taken, right? So basically, x equal to, sorry, this particular one xi equal to call center because column changes are linked with x coordinate. Similarly, row changes are linked with y coordinate. So, we are defining yi equal to row center. Now, we are calculating this particular side. If you see what we are doing, each x value we are squaring, each y value we are squaring, we are adding them up, we are giving minus sign. Same thing we, I did here. Zi equal to minus of x underscore i that is this particular one dot dot 2 plus y underscore i dot dot 2 okay then what i am doing i am creating this particular matrix where first uh, column is all the x coordinate second column is all the y coordinate and third column is all ones same thing i did here xi transpose because xi is now an array right that is low row vector so that i am transposing to column vector same yi and i am taking last column as all ones okay then applying pseudo inverse multiplied by zi transpose. Because if you see zi which is minus of xi square plus yi square that is also a column vector right. But uh, initially this our zi is a row vector. Because if you see call center row center those are basically rows. If you see in the workspace call center row center 1 cross 50 not 50 cross 1 right. So that's why we are just taking transpose here nothing else. So once we get this particular c value this c should be what is the dimension? The C dimension is nothing but uh, 3 cross 1. As you can see, A, B, C. These three values we are getting. Where first value is A, second value is B, third value is C. Okay. So, all these values will be stored in this particular C variable. So, center of X, that is XC. What is that formula? I have told you, that is minus of A by 2. A is the first coordinate. Right. So, that's what, that is first element. So, C First element we are taking divide by 2 and putting minus. Similarly, center coordinate for uh, center coordinate y location we are computing and constant. Constant means this particular c. If you see this particular c, what is c? c is nothing but x square plus y square minus r square. That c is basically the third term, right? So basically constant equal to c3, right? And then we are computing the radius using the equation square root of center of x square plus center of y square minus constant. That's what I have shown here, right? R equal to square root of x square plus y square minus uh, constant, right? So, this is how we are calculating the radius, okay? So, let us run this particular piece of code and let us see how it looks. So, the radius, what we are getting is 255.2596 pixels. So, approximately for our pendulum, 
whatever trajectory that your pendulum is following that is part of a bigger circle that circle is having the radius as 255.2596 okay now radius calculation is fine what is the next step we should fit that circle in that trajectory right so i am just doing plotting a circle that is using parametric equation x equal to a plus r cos theta y equal to b plus r sin theta where theta varies from minus 2 pi to 2 pi and I have taken very small increment because this is this is what we want to plot in terms of continuous domain. And then we are plotting that circle which we have tried to fit. And we are also plotting the distinct data points that is what we have got for each location for our pendulum. Okay. So let us just do this particular one. And if I run, you will see that how perfectly our this particular central location is fitted in this particular bigger circle okay so basically that those data points are part of the bigger circle and we are able to get the circle using our this mathematical computation okay then what i did then here basically i have written another piece of code which is almost same like earlier just i want to show you that trajectory is following this circle what we have tried to fit okay so that this particular code is not necessary but you can explore by yourself let me run this whole code and do evaluate selection so if i do hit enter here this this is our original frame and this is pendulum tracking which i already discussed in my earlier video then what is this one this one if you see this is basically the circle fitted and if i make this bigger if you closely observe there are three figures see the third figure here this is the part of circle we have plotted and how beautifully these data points are coming on that particular trajectory only that is whatever we have tried to fit is perfectly correct okay so that is what application of multiple linear regression in digital image processing use case we are able to calculate the radius of this particular pendulum movement that bigger circle and see all the data points are fitted beautifully on this particular trajectory only that is on this particular continuous part of that bigger circuit only that means our computation our multiple linear regression curve fitting is very accurate okay in terms of machine learning we can say accuracy is very high for training data okay so that is what all for my this video i'll be providing the complete code in the description box or in the comment section along with this particular pdf if you want to know the detail explanation you can again go through this okay so if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my latest videos thank you